Hi, Nana here. Today, I'm going to explain you about how to create users and employees in three many ways in Fusion, in Fusion applications, actually. I'm now working on uh, release 12, but then I will now show you about the three ways by which Audible can now create a user and employee. So let me go on and sign in now. So the first method, once again, going in. <clears throat> So the first method I'm going to see now, right, it is via security console. The security console is nothing but a sysadmin as far as uh, Fusion is concerned. I click on the navigator icon on the left-hand side top, and then go there, click on the more, and then go to the security console over here now. <clears throat> so maximize it, and then I click on this icon, and then go to the more, <clears throat> and you go to the security console. There, what happens, I'm now going to create a user now. When you create a user via security console, what happens that user will not be in a position to do any activities on purchasing actually because he is not going to have any association to ledger and legal entity. So I go to the user. He can be used by other modules like financials and projects, but not by procurement. Now, if I click on add user account, I'm not going to do it. The first name is test underscore. I will now say you is a user one now. User one. And then click on it email. I will now put my email ID fine. No, no, tradap 68. This one. And then the username is coined as first name dot last name. I will now remove the dot now. Fine. If you don't remove the dot here, you cannot remove the dot anywhere else. Fine. What else? You go there and then remove the dot. So first name dot last name is the username. I will now give a password now. <clears throat> and remember, unlike in Ebus, what about the password never expires at all? Fine. Go there. And then I will give a confirmation password. Fine. The same password I'm going to give it now. And then I will now add some roles over here now. Click on add role. <clears throat> Fine. I will now remember the password also. I will now say IT security manager. I'm adding it now. He's, it is nothing but a sysadmin role. And then I'm adding, adding a role of Ora. And I click on add membership role. And then I run down. <clears throat> click on OK. And I click on done now. So it's not done. Fine. The user gets created. So we are now creating an employee name, first name and last name, as well as a username also. Fine. What else? So the, the way I click on save and close. So this is the first method of creating a user. And remember, this user is not eligible for doing any activity in uh, sysadmin actually, in rather in procurement actually. Now the second one, I'll go there. So we can do it via manage users now. So second second way of creating a user and employee is via manage users task now. I go there and then I will now go to the manage users task. It is manage percentage, users percentage entry. So manage users task, I'm gonna go for it. So go to the manage users task, <coughs> go down. So go to the manage users task. This is a way where what happens we can even associate Fine. If you go and then query the test, fine. test, and then you enter, it will not be visible at all because he is not a legal employee. Only legal employees will be visible. Fine, test underscore user is not at all visible here. Fine, they are not visible. So I will now click on plus, and then let me create a new employee user association. <clears throat> so click on plus now, and then here the last name, fine, the first name is test underscore, and then is the user two, <clears throat> user two. I'm creating it now, and then email. I will now put the same user. Doesn't matter. No, no, not apps. Sixty at gmail.com, go there. And then I will now go there, uh, uh, the right list now then. In the username, I'm going to create it now, fine. It is what, test underscore, <coughs> and user two. Is a username, I can now fine, go down. In the employee person type, what happens, draw it and make it as an employee. So the moment you make it an employee, what happens, the ledger legal entity association can be done over here now. I'm now making it as an employee now. So the moment you make him as an employee, what happens? We can now specify the ledger legal entity. So I will now put M01 <coughs> as an employee, legal employer. Right? Is a legal employer. The legal entity is the one which is going to have what happens? The control of all the employees. Actually, it's the owner of all the employees. Actually, go there. And then I will now put the business unit also. And then I will now give the job also. Right? M01. Let me give a job also. <coughs> right? I will now say is a manager. The grade is not required. The department is a mandatory one as far as uh, he's not showing as a mandatory, but what happens? It will be normally mandatory when you're creating it through other ones. Fine, go there. So we are now given the employee with the ledger legal entity association. So you can now do all the activities on procurement action. When you do it from this admin, he is not getting associated with the ledger legal entity. Fine, what? Go down. And then we can go down and then add the roles. Now, but you add role. And then I'm going to add a role of ID security manager now. Fine. It's ID secure. And then click on search now. I'm adding the role of ID security manager. So likewise, what happens, you can even add multiple roles over here now. <coughs> Go there, ID, and then click on search now. <coughs> I will not give a blank search. So human resource specialist is only coming. Uh, maybe what happens, uh, there are only certain things which can add via this now. Then we have to go to sysadmin and then we can add the roles. Fine. 
after having created the rule, what happens? We, we can only do this now. And then afterwards, what happens? They have to go to sysadmin and then add the other rules as well. So this is the second way of doing it now. And then uh, what happens? This is now having an you know, association to ledger and legal entity. And then now seven close. Now we'll go for the third way. Now seven close. <coughs> the third way is via Hachara Masna. <coughs> so we'll go there. And then do the third way. Frank, click on done. And then here I will now go to this place. I will now click on the navigator. And then I will now go down. <coughs> and then go to the what's called workforce. My workforce. And then go to the new person. This is the third way of creating a user and employee. Click on new person now. So click on the task carousel. And then here what happens? You go to the hire and employee. So here what happens? I'm going to hire an employee now. <clears throat> so go there. I will now put what happens? The hiring reasons what? As I hire him as a full-time employee. And then go down. And then what happens with one? And then the legal employer is what? M01. I'm going to put the legal entity. Legal entity is the owner of all the employees actually. Fine. Employees are housed in the legal entity. Fine. Go there. Go down. And then the last name. The first name is test underscore. Fine. I will now say it's a user three. I'm reading it now. Fine. Go there. Go down. And then give the gender as male. <coughs> and then date of birth. I'm putting my data birth now, 16th <coughs> iPhone, 0 7 iPhone 60. And then go tap. So I now put it down. I go there. And then afterwards, what happens? They come and click on next now. And the next, what happens? It goes to the personal information. <coughs> there. What happens? You know, there. Fine, click on next now. The user is now getting created. The employee information, what happens? We already give the appropriate ones. Now, the personal information, I think, is required actually. And if you go back, we can even, uh, what happens? I give the, what happens in this place? We now come into the, what's called the employment information here. What happens? The, some, some of them are mandatory. So I'll now make it as bad active, no payroll. The business unit is M01. And then give a tap. And then I will now associate what happens here, position also, M01. And then I will now put the position, manager position. I'm going to put it now. Fine, go there. So multiple employees can occupy this position as such now. <clears throat> click on OK. And then the remaining are not mandatory as such. Fine. Even though some fields are shown as mandatory, it is not really mandatory. Fine. Go down, go there. And then what happens in the back? I will now show you the person information in the back. In the person information, what happens if you know other details like what happens, the home address, you can put it, the phone details, the email details, fine, and the marital relationship, everything you can fill up. Fine. If you have the information, you can fill it up. Otherwise, what happens? Not, it's not mandatory. Fine. Fine. Click on next now. The employment information is given. And then go there. <clears throat> click on next now. In the composition, other information, what happens if you want to fill up, you can fill up everything. And then otherwise, what happens? You click on next and then review and then submit. So this is the third way of creating a user and employee. So employees who are created, employees and users who are created via sysadmin are not eligible for any purchasing activity. Whereas employees are created via managed users as well as what happens through the my workforce new person, they are all fully eligible because they have an association to ledger legal entity actually. So they are not done. <clears throat> Fine, go there. And then whenever you want to modify it a little time, what happens? You can go to the person management and then query the user. <clears throat> Let us say, well, now query the first user now. Fine. The first user is what? Last name is what? Uh, user 3, user 1, user 1, comma, space, test, underscore. So last name, comma, first name, I had to make a query now. User 1, comma, test, underscore, I'm querying it now. So you'll now see, click on search now. I'm searching it now. So, <clears throat> Fine, I'm searching it. Uh, user, I will now say, User one <coughs> underscore test underscore test underscore user one, isn't it? Fine. What is it? Fine. Click on search now. So this I'm unable to even query at all. Fine. Go there. I will now query uh, user two now. Fine. Go there. Let me query user two. Is available. <coughs> so users who are created via sysadmin are not possible for you to what happens even query in Hacharam as actually because they don't have any ledger legal entity association because they are not a legal employee as such. So that's why it's not coming. So go there. I will not query for the user two. User two and user three are having ledger legal entity association. So in HCM we can very well query. You select it and then click on it. I'm going to edit it now. I'm going to edit it now. <clears throat> click on edit. So once when I edit it, what happens? I can even add the manager for him now. And go there. So click on the bottom. I will not go for update now. Edit and update. Let me add a manager for him now. Fine. You'll now give the reasons for this now. For why you're updating it. I'll click on OK. Action is a mandatory one. So I'll now say assignment change or something like that. Along. You can even appropriate put a manager change. Yeah, manager change. I'm going to put it now. I click on OK. So this can be done appropriately so that what happens? You cannot take records, reports basically on this now. Fine. Go there. In the bottom, what happens? I'm going to add a manager. Fine. Click on plus. I'm going to add who is this manager, who is just called supervisor in uh, what happens in EBS now. Fine. I will now say some some employee I'm going to put on fine EMP1 comma M01. <coughs> I'm putting it now. I'm now putting an employee. Fine. Some employee last name comma first name and then type is what? I will now say line manager. And that's it. I'm going to update it now and go there. And then let me update it now. Fine. Click on save and close. They're now updated now. <coughs> 
So these are the three ways I will repeat. One via sysadmin, which is not eligible for procurement activity, but for financials and projects, you can very well use. And again, what happens for supplier creation, you can use it, but supplier side creation, you cannot use it again. Right? Those employees, those users who are created via sysadmin, we cannot create a supplier site actually, but suppliers can create it. And then for projects also, you can use it via sysadmin and then other modules mainly. But yes, supply chain modules, what happens, you're not supposed to create from there. You have to create via manage users or what happens through HCM, new person, you have to create. Now. That's it. Right. The short video on uh, user employee creation. I am not going to conduct on not conducting uh, fusion procurement training. If you have any uh, interest on joining these programs, right? uh, next program is not joining on this coming Saturday. Uh, then uh, that's uh, uh, from uh, or happens a full day on uh, weekends actually. And then if you are interested, please write to me at nana.app60 at uh, gmail.com. Right. I will now send you the agenda as well as the other details of this. Right. Thank you for watching this short video on user employee creations in fusion actually. Thank you. Bye.